Hello and welcome back to another episode of the eHulse Show. In this episode, we're going to be talking about how to be the leader in relationship with women. Now, of course, this show and series kicked off with me talking about the 40 things I was wrong about in my 40 years of life. And although we did reach and breach some of those topics, some of these topics need a little bit more expanding. And I was so happy to have my guest Rolo Tomasi on the show just a few weeks ago, where we spoke about red pill philosophy. And, uh, and it was really eye-opening for me when I discovered the red pill and the rational male, many of the things that, uh, that I talk about in my most previous videos, recent videos, Instagram page. Uh, but today, I want to continue to expand on that topic of how to deal with women in relationship, uh, how to position yourself as an alpha male, and how to, how to get the most out of life by putting yourself as your mental point of origin rather than women. Uh, as a mentor to men for many, many, many years with millions of subscribers that follow me, I get questions all the time from men about how to deal with breakups, how to meet a woman, how to relate to the opposite sex. And my experience has been a bit different than those of many of you meaning that uh, I started dating when I was a teenager and married one of the first women I started dating, right? So that kind of limits my experience in terms of dating, but it doesn't, it doesn't exclude me from becoming well-versed and educating myself in order to bring the men that I mentor the most cutting edge, eye-opening, red pill awareness uh, ideas so that you can be the strongest version of yourself in all areas of life, but we're going to be exploring relationships today and dealing with women, dating in particular. And, uh, and I've got a guest. Uh, I met this guest, my guest, uh, by the way, his name is Steve the Dean Williams. He's an expert, a relationship expert, uh, and so much more. <laughs> Very fascinating guy. We'll get an opportunity to speak with him in just a moment here. But I met him just a few weeks ago at the 21 Convention Patriarch Edition. The 21 Convention is, uh, is, a, is a convention that's put on a few times a year uh, by my friend Anthony Johnson. And it is the ultimate event for men. And he's got speakers from many different backgrounds that offer a ton of different perspective perspectives and education, advice, and inspiration in not just how to be a good man, but how to be good at being a man, right? There's a big difference. I got that from Jack Donovan. You know, there's a difference between being a good man and being good at being a man. And being a good man has a lot to do with what the world, uh, particularly the gynocentric world, as Rollo spoke about, expects of men. But being good at being a man is far more tactical, strategic, and, uh, and is one of those things that we're really not taught. You know, we go to school and we learn about, uh, we, we, we begin to relate, our, relate to women in a way that is un, typically unresourceful. Uh, and then we learn about relationships from either watching our parents, which for the most part, their relationships are usually not super successful, and, and, and most people I speak to don't want to emulate them, or, or from media, music, Disney, and they've all been convoluted. We've been tricked in many ways, uh, men, as it relates to how to deal with women and how to, how to best approach relationships with them. So the 21 Convention is, uh, is one of these events that allows you to get exposure to many of the things you wouldn't have learned through media, wouldn't have learned from your school teacher or mommy or, uh, or listening to music. Most of the music, even a lot of the quote unquote hardcore music like rap and, and rock and things like that are very, very feminized. Uh, the, the music is usually very centered around materialism. And as I spoke about in, in previous videos, uh, this, this attachment to sex and money and hoes and clothes uh, is very feminized. It's very focused on the, on the material world, what you get, what you have, sensuality, YOLO, and all that really weak shit that keeps men trapped. Well, uh, the 21 Convention offered a, uh, a patriarch edition. That's where I met our guest, Steve, Steve Williams. And this patriarch edition was all about how to be good fathers, Right, not the Homer Simpson Simpson type, or 
uh, the blue pill beta uh, follower in the home, but how to be a strong, masculine, loving leader to your wife, to your children, and your home. I was grateful enough to be able to speak at that event, and I was also grateful enough to meet our guest, Steve. And um, before I tell you a little bit more about what Steve spoke about and what we're going to be speaking about in this show, I want to invite you to come to the next 21 convention, which is in October 2019 here in Florida, Orlando. And I'll be speaking there. Steve, our guest, will be speaking there, as well as a myriad of other strong men working to make men strong again in this, uh, in this soft Soft world, soft, weak, beta, blue pill, weak, weak wristed, flimsy, flaccid world. And so um, if you're interested in joining us for that, which I would highly, highly recommend, uh, there's a link down below for you to for you to check that out. Now, uh, I gave a talk and then I also participated by listening to a myriad of different talks from a myriad of different powerful men. Uh, many of which I'll be getting on the show later on, but Steve's stuck out to me immediately when he began speaking because he offered really practical advice. You know, it was wonderful to have Rolo on the show, and Rolo offered a lot of eye-opening philosophy. Uh, uh, he spoke in terms of intersexual dynamics and uh, psychology and things of this nature, um, which give you perspective which give you an opportunity to see things a little bit differently so that maybe you can make different choices. But Steve offered and offers very practical advice, things to do that support you in being, being great at being a man and also being great in your, your relationship with women. And so very briefly, I wanna talk a little bit about Steve. Uh, I met him at the 2021 20, convention and uh, he's a relationship and sex expert who offers practical advice, not just theory. Steve teaches men and women how to unplug themselves from the dating matrix of TV, radio, magazines, and media. Instead, Steve's upfront, no-nonsense, blunt dating advice goes against everything that people have been taught. Right? And like I said, we've been tricked in many different ways. Uh, Steve believes in order to get your dating life right with the opposite sex, you have to get yourself right first. And I think that makes perfect sense, especially going hand in hand with my philosophy of becoming the strongest version of yourself and then empowering others. And the most important person, people in your life that you begin empowering are those that are closest to you. And for many of us, that begins with our, our girlfriends, our wives, and of course, our families. And so Steve is going to be speaking with us uh, about that. And my intentions for this show is to discuss, number one, why most men fail in relationship with women. So he's going to be talking with us about that. He's also going to talk to us about uh, how to stop competing for women uh, and make women compete for you instead. You know, in the previous show, I talked about how we uh, tend to put the pussy on the pedestal, you know, and, and sort of look up to women. Steve talks about how we, we tend to worship Women And it's funny because I get a lot of messages from a lot of young men every single day who uh, they're, they're head over heels, weak in their knees, and very uh, ungrounded in dealing with their crushes and dealing with the women that they love. Uh, we're going to talk also about how women unconsciously shit test men by biting their gold. This was something very interesting that he spoke about in his talk uh, where women out of a unconscious and primordial need for safety, security, and survival, test their men. Uh, when a woman is giving you a hard time, when a woman is she, in the manosphere or the red pill world, they call it shit testing. And sometimes it seems like, you know, she's, uh, she's, she's baiting you on, trying to get you to fight with her, uh, crying over spilled milk and making a big fuss about things. And, as men, we're, we're not aware of what's going on and we try to solve their problems or we, uh, or we get upset, and run away or just can't deal with it. And I don't blame you. You know, I, I'm not interested in having more problems. I'm not interested in having a woman who's, who's problems in my life. You know, uh, I don't need a woman that's a challenge 
I need someone who's going to add to me and support. But at the same time, in or, a part of her survival strategy, and I even see it with my wife and my children, they do it to me, is they, uh, what Steve says, bites your gold. They bite the gold. And that's to see if you're real or not. You know, there's this, if you ever watch cartoons when you're a kid and, you know, uh, somebody finds gold, you know, and they want to know if it's real. Like, you know, this guy really actually find gold or is it fool's gold? And they bite, the, they bite the gold. They put the gold in their mouth and bite it. That's to see, is this the real thing? And you think about a bite. A bite is like painful. So if a woman is biting you, right, nagging you, henpecking you, nibbling at you, biting you, uh, it has less to do with, you know, really trying to control you or manipulate you. Uh, it has more to do with her strategy of seeing, are you really the man that you claim to be? Are you really the man that I think you are? And if she bites you and you flinch, she's going to trust you a far less. And, uh, and it's big for women. It's, it's huge for women to be able to trust the strength of a man. They rest in the strength of a strong man uh, so that they can relax into their femininity, so that they can, so they can be free to be women. A big part of the issue that we're having today with uh, you know, the, the, the reversal of the, the roles in sexual relationships is because uh, men have become soft and women don't trust them. And they know they don't trust them because when they test, you know, a simple test, a simple shit test, one that, uh, that you probably face quite often, you don't even realize is the shit test is like when it's time to go out for dinner, right? This is a, this is a common one. And, uh, and your wife is like, or your woman's like, you know, where, do you, where should we go to eat? And if you say something like, I don't know, love, wherever you want to eat, or where do you want to go? I don't know, wherever you want to go. She then has to toughen up, tense up. And can't trust that you're a leader in a relationship because it's just a simple thing. Uh, can this man be decisive? Can he make a decision? Can he lead me in the direction that he sees fit is most is is best for the two of us? And that's a simple one. That's just about where to go eat. But this happens you know, consistently throughout your life. You'll experience it. Uh, she wants you to be assertive. She wants you to make decisions. She wants you to put your foot down. And so she's testing you through these shit tests. We're going to talk about how to determine if a woman is worthy of your time. This is big. Some women are not worthy of your time, uh, your name, your ring, and your sperm. This is funny. And this is what he talks about during the various different stages of uh, the relationship, men with women. Uh, a lot of women are, are, they're not worth your time no matter how good they look. All right? A lot of that, a lot of that is fool's gold also too. You know, women who are all propped up in their boobs with uh, with silicone, and uh, and you know they they doll themselves up and they go out there and they look like a like a gold trophy, but really are not worth much besides sex, you know. And uh, and sex is cheap. Se sex is uh, is you can get from any woman, but a woman that's worth your time has to be able to add value to you and into your life. And of course, if you're planning on, you know, marrying and having children, you really got to, you, you got to really vet who it is that you choose to spend your time with. Other intentions for the show is to how to have pride in yourself by maintaining your mental point of origin, how to put yourself first. Uh, you know, this is the opposite of putting the pussy on the pedestal. This is putting, putting yourself first. And of course, this is right for everyone, men and women, but women do this unconsciously. Women do this automatically. They put themselves first and it's normal, it's natural, and it's right because they are the, they're the bearers of children. They're the, they're the bringer forths of the future. And if they don't put themselves first, uh, they won't have the mental, physical, and emotional reserves to be able to support life. But men, uh, in many way, in many instances, in many ways, and in many circumstances, tend to put uh, put the woman first, and then and then the women tend to put the children first, and then we got this reversal of order in the home where children rule the home, women are the mediator, and men are the followers, and uh, and that doesn't work. It doesn't work for anyone. No one's satisfied in that case, women or men. No one's satisfied. Uh, we're going to talk about how to master the six stages of your relationship. 
with a woman. This was very eye opening to me. wasn't wasn't aware of these various stages. Of course, you know, um, I bypassed a lot of this stuff. But I thought it was very resourceful upon listening to his presentation, and I wanted to bring these tools to you. And so understanding these six, six stages and uh, how to navigate them is going to be really important for you. And then finally, how to set your boundaries and expectations in your relationship with women. So this is going to be a great show. I'm really excited to bring Steve the Dean Williams here for you. Uh, his website is themanmindset.com. He's got a radio show that broadcasts on YouTube. Uh, you can look him up and you can listen to some of his advice. He's got uh, he's got a ton of videos on a lot of different topics that I I'm even a little hesitant to breach. You know, he talks a lot about uh, sex and uh, and some of his videos are are pretty wild. He sent me one about how to um, how to how to what to do with a woman's feet when you're having sex with her. I thought this was really strange. Uh, he had a he had a little like fake foot. And he was showing you, like, if you have a woman in a particular position, like how you caress the foot. Weird stuff like that. <laughs> stuff that maybe I could learn from. I don't know. Maybe I'll try it out with Colleen. I'll start tickling her feet while we're having sex. I don't know. Maybe she'll like it. And I'll give Steve uh, my testimonial. But my point is that he offers a lot of advice uh, on relationship and on sex and, uh, and, and on being great at being a man especially as it relates to women. So without further ado, I'm really proud to bring you my guest, Steve Williams. Steve the Dean Williams from themanmindset.com. Steve, thanks for joining us, man. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it, brother. Yeah. So Steve, uh, I want to open up with this question. Uh, why do most men fail in relationships with women? Well, because they never know how to set a standard. Um, I always tell guys that relationships are kind of like a job. Uh, you've got to be the company. You've got to be able to know what your standard is. But you also got to be able to let the woman know what your standard is. And for a lot of guys out there, they don't do that. They meet a woman. They start to date her. They get into the relationship. And they live with them. And they never set a standard of what their expectations are with these women. So what are the, some of the standards that men should set? Well, the way I have it set up uh, for a guy, a lot of guys out there is every there are different phases of relationships that men go through. There's the meeting and dating phase. There's a relationship phase, moving in together phase, engagement and marriage. So basically the first phase is letting women know that you're drama free. That mm -hmm. means, that, you know, I'm a drama free man. If anybody brings any drama in my life, they're gone. And it's just like the company. When you walk into a, a, a job, the company already has a standard set. They tell you what time you come in, when you leave, when you have lunch, and how much you get paid. Now, payment is negotiable, but you sign that data line. Now, when you get out of order, they will give you a warning sign. You do anything else outside that warning sign, you're fired. But the thing with a lot of men is that they don't do that. They never set up that standard to say, you know what? If you disrespect me, that means yell, raise your voice, throw things out at me, or mistreat me in any old kind of way, you're gone. And that's, the, that's just the first phase of the dating phase, man. So you say that there are six stages to a relationship. Yes, absolutely. And so that first stage is about setting boundaries, and uh, you talk about tolerance level. What are, what are the other stages? Well, and, and, and uh, to mix, mix in tolerance with the stages, see, right. a lot of men have what is called high tolerance. That means they always put up with the disrespect, and because they don't believe in themselves or don't have a sense of self, they allow misbehavior to happen. Then you have the guys that I call low tolerance. Those are the guys that muddle along between high and low, meaning that, some things they would stand firm on, but other things they'll give leeway to. What I try to teach men is no tolerance. That means I'm not putting up with it whatsoever because I always ask guys the question, can she treat the boss, CEO, or CFO of the company the way she's treating you? And nine times out of 10, or 10 out of 10, they don't because they know they'll get fired. So 
what happens after the meeting and dating phase goes into the relationship phase. So in the relationship phase, and I'll give you an example. I don't do the male friend thing. I'm not insecure, but, you know, I just don't do the male friend thing. Now, I know women have as male associates, but I don't want some guy calling my house up at 10 o'clock or anything like that. So that's just kind of an example of the relationship phase, but there's tons more. Then after the relationship phase goes into what I call the living together phase. Now, the living together phase is kind of weird because I always tell guys, and they always get shocked. They say, well, I tell them, the first thing you do is get a joint account with her. They're like, oh, my God, what are you talking about? And I said, wait, calm down. I'm explaining this to you. See, the joint account is basically this. If the bills are $1,000, we get a joint account. I'll put $500 in. You put $500 in. Uh, you know, uh, you know uh, oil, not oil, but uh, water, gas and entertainment all go in there. So that means your money is your money. My money is my money. I will not touch your money. I will not ask. Don't ask me for gas money. Don't ask me for anything. You are owning your own because I want someone who is responsible. So that's part of it. But also there's going to be rules to understanding that I'm the man in the house. Even if I'm living in your house, I'm the man in the house. So we're going to have conversations and I will be making the final decision. Now, these are certain things that I always tell guys, if she can't give you 70% or more of what you ask for, then what's so beautiful about this, Elliot, is that you fall back. Most guys will either go forward and allow certain things to fester. And, you know, so what I want to do is give them a, a blueprint. So from the relationship and the, uh, from the living together goes into the engagement phase. The engagement phase is just this, man. This is when I've got to look at the books. I've got to see your credit. I've got to know what kind of debt you're in. I've got to know how much money you're spending. I've got to know, uh, we've got to talk about religion, politics, discipline, schooling, college. Uh, we got to talk about children. We got to discuss all these things because I'm looking for a legacy. I'm looking for to carry my name and I got to make sure that you are the right vehicle because as the higher we go up that mountain, Elliot, you become more of a representation of me and my last name. So I have to make sure that you're the right woman for me, man. So that's the relationship phase. And it's interesting because a lot of the conversations that you suggest men have, you know, religion, politics, money, uh, I think we kind of just gloss over that and, and hope those things are going to work themselves out, but it doesn't. Oh, it, ne it never does. And that's why they have those marriage counseling and Dr. Phil moments because they get in relationships with somebody they don't vet. I'm vetting you to make sure you're worth my time and my last name and my ring and my sperm because those things mean so much to me. I'm just not going to hand it away like Halloween candy. I don't care how nice your body looks and all that other stuff. If you cannot comply, and again, this is not a thing of, uh, you know, it's just my way, the highway, but these are my standards that I hold dear to myself. And if you cannot ride along with me with those standards, Elliot, then we're going to have to reassess. And don't get me wrong. There are many times I've told women before that, look, you, we're, we're great, but we're just missing a few things. So we can become a booty call. I, I'm not, you cannot move forward if I don't see you wife worthy. I think that's really resourceful to be able to look at the relationship in these stages. That way you can decide whether or not you want to graduate her and be with her in these, these other stages. You mentioned, just to backtrack just a minute, you mentioned a uh, joint bank account. That's interesting because that's something I learned from my parents. Uh, they were like, the first thing you, you do is you pool your resources and you work together. That's probably a tough one for a lot of people, especially when we live in this very egocentric world. So, but, I, but I do agree with you on that. Maybe you could talk about the benefits. Why would somebody want to do that? Well, the benefits to me is I, I need to know how you handle your money. I need to know how you manage your money. I need to know that you are responsible money-wise because, again, I can't give you my last name if I don't, I don't want guys to run into debt, Elliot, because debt is one of the biggest things that cause cheating and breaking up and all the, uh, just a bunch of stuff, man. You know, she wants that $40,000 wedding and she wants to show off for in front of her friends for that one day. And then the couple will come back to debt, not living the same lifestyle, arguments, cheating, you know, it just happens that way. So 
what I want to make sure is this, that you can manage yourself and manage your money without having to ask me. Because if you start asking me for money, my question is, what are you doing with your money? But at that point, I'm not going to really push the issue that much. But if we move, uh, if we move to the, you know, getting engaged, that's when we really going to have to pound that book and see what's going on, man. You mentioned uh, in this in this stage, moving in with one another. That's a part of the same stage as as pooling resources, I assume. Yes, sir. Uh, I think you called it the uh, engagement phase. What are your thoughts on men moving in? with a woman? Well, I don't really, I would love for a man to have his stuff together where she moves in with him, but you know, that's a perfect world and we're not living in one. So sometimes he may have to move in with her, but regardless if he moves in with her, if she moves in with him, he's king. That's the, that's the bottom line. Right. When I live with you, I'm king. If you live with me, I'm king. You have to understand your position. And again, if you're fighting me on that and you want to throw that, because one thing I, I dread for guys is when they move in with a woman, they start to compromise and mm -hmm. they pull off their spine and their balls. They start apologizing. They, and then she starts threatening, you know, I'll kick you out. I don't want them to be in that situation. That's why I would rather them have their stuff together. Because the thing about this, Elliot, is that, if you're demanding all these things from a woman, you've got to have your stuff together, man. That was one of the things my father told me. He said, never move in with a woman. <laughs> yeah, he, was, yeah. he was adamant about that. He said, she either moves in with you or you move in together, but not, not the other way around. Yes. And if you sign your name, on, that's what I'm saying. If y'all move in together, your name is at the top of the lease. So if she gets out of order, she's the one getting out, not you. So what's, what's the next stage? Well, once you get into the, <coughs> excuse me, um, the, 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 from the relationship into the, uh, the engagement phase, like I said before, this is when everything is serious. This is when I've got to find out, are you worthy of my last name? Are you responsible? Because a lot of women accumulate debt. A lot of women uh, uh, have bad credit and things like that. I don't want to take on your problems. You need to clean that up before we move forward. But that's just like I say, Elliot, that's just the one thing. We've got to talk about our future. What do we want to do as far as do we want to move from an apartment to living in a house? What's the plan on that? What is our five-year plan? What is our 10-year plan? And when it comes to kids, how many kids do we want to have? Discipline, Christmas. Halloween, like I say, religious preferences, um, politics, all these things need to be discussed because we have to be a front. When, when you and I, not you and I, but when her and I, excuse me, uh, when I put that ring and honor you to be my wife or my queen, then we've got to be a, a front versus all things. You are not to put my business out on the street. We are going to talk. We are going to communicate. We're going to have a great time doing it, but it is you and I versus the world. We are not going to let your mom, your dad, or anybody else come in because a lot of young men, Elliot, have that problem when mom tries to, you know, a lot, of, a lot of these young boys have single moms and things like that. And a lot of these moms come in and try to dictate what the son should be married to or uh, is she good enough? No. If we are straight front, Elliot, it is you and I versus the world, right. and we will not allow anybody, anybody, to come in and ruin what we got. So is the, the next stage uh, marriage? Well, no, after the engagement, then marriage. We got it. We've got to, we've got to, I've got to make sure that because when we're living together, it's kind of like we, it's a pre, pre marriage kind of thing. I, we know when you're living with someone, you, you're really trying to see their mannerisms and their habits and how they are. Now, like I say, once we get to that engagement phase and we begin to talk about these things and we can agree on these things, then we can move forward into the marriage. But please let this be known. Don't let the smooth taste fool you. You get that ring and you get out of order, it's done. I mean, the, the thing that I'm telling you with no tolerance is this. I want a woman to represent me right. 
And if you cannot represent me right as my wife and have my last name, that's when we're done. But also what's also important, I always say, guys, to the, the men out there, is protect your sperm. Do not have unprotected sex until she has your last name because a lot of guys have sex with these women, have babies, and then things don't work out, and then they're worried about the next man coming in trying to raise their child, Elliot. Yeah, Rolo uh, spoke about that in the show that we had. Uh, he called that um, cuck, cuckery? Yeah, I guess. I, well, I don't know if it's called. Yeah, I don't know if it's necessary to say cuck, cuckold. Cuckold. Well, a cuckold. <laughs> well, cuckold is more of a sexual thing, but um, in this situation, I always tell guys, you got to understand something. When you have a child with a woman and you're not married to her, uh, you have to understand there are going to be other guys in that child's life. She's going to deal with other men, and you've got right. to accept that. And that's something I tell you, you've got to be careful. Stop having unprotected sex with these women. Just wrap up, protect your sperm. So a lot of men in the manosphere uh, are cautious against marriage. What are your thoughts on that? I, that is one of the, I, I hate that, man. I, I hate that. I hate, I hate when people try to scare these young men into not wanting to carry on their last names and be married. Now, what I always tell guys, if you want to have children and you want to push your last name, absolutely go down the road of getting married. But if you don't want to, you don't have to, but don't, don't feel like you can't do it. See, the problem is with the world we have today, a lot of people have what I call ABC uh, thinking. If A does it to B, that means A is going to do it to C, and that's not the case. A lot of these guys out there that scream don't get married were weak in their relationships. Mm -hmm. They allowed their women to walk all over them, treat them like, I will, can I cuss? Or just, no, I just treat them like uh, a, a, a cupcake. Excuse me, I won't cuss. They, they treat them like cupcakes. They treat them weak. They stepped all over them. Then they all in their feelings. And then they want to scare the next guy saying, well, don't get married because marriage is a bad thing. No, marriage was a bad thing to you because you never had a standard that you stood on. Now, for these young men out here, they are, they are so scared to get married and so scared to re get relationships because they think the woman is going to do them wrong. But here's the key thing, Elliot. You train all these women on how to treat you. She can't treat you any old kind of way unless you allow that behavior to happen. That's why this blueprint I have, or what I call a troubleshooting guide, which most men don't have, is something they can always go back on because – if she gets out of line, out of order, and disrespectful, you can always fall back. That's interesting, you know, because I think a lot of men think that they uh, or, or offer a lot of investment to a relationship and to consider backtracking. How do you have that? How do you have that conversation up front? And how do you have that conversation when it's time for her to to be downgraded? Well, the beginning, just like the job. This is what, this is who I am. I don't do drama. If you bring drama in my life, we're done. That, that's, that's how simple it is. It's so simple, it's complicated to a lot of these guys because they think they've got to do all these things. No, absolutely not. This is who I am, and I'm just going to let you know, just like the job. This is what I expect of you. And if you cannot live up to those expectations, we can't be, and that's the truth of the matter. I always believe being 100 with these women. And when she gets out of order, there's no reason to get mad. There's no reason to get angry. She already knows what's going to happen. If she gets out now, again, I always call it the king, uh, the merciful king. And the reason I call it the merciful king, because they are going to test you because a lot of guys pretend to be like you and I when they're wearing a mask. So these women are going to test you. They test all of us at least one time to see if you're the real deal. That's why I call it the gold. You know, back in the old days when they saw gold, they bid it because they wanted to make sure was it real or is it fool's gold. So they're going to test to see what kind of man you are. They're always going to do that. But when they do it one time, that's the, they do it more than one, excuse me, that's when you've got to make the choice. And that's why I call it the, the, the sacrifice of like Captain Kirk, because, you know, I'm a, I'm a Trekkie and all that other stuff. And it was always, Kirk always had to make those decisions, man. Do I let Yeoman Henson die and we lose the Enterprise? Or do I let, or excuse me, save the Enterprise? Or do I save Yeoman Henson and lose it? I've got to make that decision. And the first rule of being a man is sacrifice. You know, it's not going to be a great thing sometimes, but you got to think about yourself and don't, and I'm sorry, I'm selfish, conceited, I'm arrogant, 
It's all about me, as you can see right there. So uh, at the end of the day, I don't mind. I have no problem with letting her go because I have this thing that most men don't have, and that's options. And once a woman realizes you're a man with options, she's going to rethink her whole programming a little bit because she knows that she is replaceable, just like someone at the job, brother. I think it's fascinating that you relate to relationships or you speak about relationships in terms of a business. And it sounds like you're, you're being a CEO. It's funny because when I started dating my wife, when we were much younger, I, I kind of unconsciously set things up that way where it was like, this is the mission. This is the vision. This is where I'm going. And you could, you could be a good employee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You can be a good asset to the company and to what's going on. Yeah. Today, I call her the commander because she, she takes on various roles that like fill, fill job descriptions that need to be done. And she does a wonderful job of that. So, you know, you mentioned that the media, music, uh, pop culture sets us up to fail in a lot of ways and we don't get the ed education that we need. A lot of things you're even talking about right now, I I'm sure men are, are watching it and they're cringing, you know, feeling real, a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, what's going on in the world and why, why aren't we receiving this education and how are we actually miseducated by the media? Well, feeling uncomfortable is a good thing. Well, the yeah. thing is, is that, okay, here's the, here's the honest truth. The honest truth is if everybody thought like you and I, the economy would crash because they wouldn't be really flowers, weddings. The, the diamond industry would go down. Food industry would uh, soak up the liquor and all these things would go under. So there's a rule to this ecosystem is like this. There can't be too many chiefs. There's got to be more Indians. Everybody's got a role to play and the media pushes it to these guys. They don't push self-awareness to these young men. What they push is women. They push sex. They push, if you buy this beer, you'll get the woman. If right. you drive this car, you'll get the woman. If you have this nice suit, you'll get the woman. And what these young men are so blind to it is this. The cars, the money, the clothes, that lifestyle is going to get her attention. But it's not going to have her attracted to you. See, a lot of guys, what the media pushes is, Star in what you do and forget about who you are. Pretend that you have all this value and you have all this money and you're great and, 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 and make her shine and make her think that you're living a life that you're not living. But you got to understand something, man. These women aren't stupid. And that's the problem the majority of these guys fail in. They think these women are just dumb. Like they just don't think. And these women can recognize weakness. They can recognize a man. I don't have to stand on the money I make because I'm standing on me. Whereas the other guys, they have to stand on these things because they hide behind them. They hide behind the money and they hide behind the nice car, cars and clothes because that's what the media says to do because they think this is the fastest way to get a woman. But then when a guy like me who doesn't have money is smashing all the women and the guy who has money isn't, they're still scratching their head. And I always say, listen, work out because you want to work out. Have a nice car because you want to have one and clothes. But if you're doing it for women, you're, you're messing up, man. So my next question is, how can men uh, stop competing for women and instead make women com compete for you? Well, the easiest thing that they don't understand is, this is the being a man is not about women. Women are a perk in your journey towards manhood. And that's what they don't understand. See, those that work on themselves internally could prosper more because they're standing on laws, principles, rules, codes, and narratives. See, a lot of guys, I always talk about the three little pigs. A lot of guys have the house made of, of, of wood and hay, and they have no solid foundation to stand on because they're standing on things outside of themselves. So what I always tell guys, if you want to get women, you've got to be the best you. And I know it's so cliche. I always tell people that, you know, you've got to love yourself and they don't, they say, oh, whatever. They don't understand. I love me. I, I, I love me so much. I feel like every day I need to go to the police station and say, I'm stalking me. I mean, I love, I love me. 
I, I, that's, I, I love me. But also, I, I know that I was born a winner, and I tell guys that all the time. When, when your mom and dad got together, you raced against millions of your brothers and sisters to reach the egg. That alone makes you a winner. But somewhere along the way, you lost a sight of who you are as a man. Or maybe you wasn't taught that. And so a lot of these guys don't believe in themselves. And the fact that they don't believe in themselves, they believe that they can't get a woman or they can't talk to a woman or they make excuses why they can't. And I always ask them, how much do they cost? And they're like, what are you talking about? The excuse fairies. I just want to know what color. I like to get one in red because all I see guys doing is making excuses, Elliot, when it comes to manhood and getting women. So I'm really fascinated with this idea of testing the gold. Like you said, a woman will bite you. Uh, what are some of the most common uh, shit tests, gold biting tests that women will implement in order to see if you're a worthy man, if you're a strong man? Talk, talking about other guys. Uh, mm. uh, um, being disrespectful. I mean, talking, raising their voice. Uh, if he says he wants to do this, she tries to do that. Oh, gosh. All right. If we plan to meet up at the, I don't know, the movie theater and I need you, I need you to be there at nine o'clock. She may show up at nine 20 or nine 15 to see what you're going to do. They're always waiting to see what you're going to do because they too many men nowadays live in lies and too many men wear masks and and too many guys try to portray so they will they will just do the opposite again i say i'm drama free i don't i don't deal with respect don't raise your voice at me treat me the way i treat you and if you think my you take my kindness for weakness then i'm not going to mess with you that way she'll be like okay i already start raising the uh uh-uh. hey, i i told you one time do it again that's it do it again and you're gone and i, and I don't blink i don't stutter I just let them know. So they're going to do anything to see if you're going to move. And what I mean by move is what a lot of guys do when the woman gives them that shit test, they're the one apologizing to the woman. Why are you mad? Why are you upset? Why aren't you talking to me? What did I do wrong? How can I make it right? And you send her flowers and all that. It's like you're rewarding bad behavior. Nah, man, don't work that way over in this way. You mess up. You're gone, man. Hmm. Uh, Steve, you're married, correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Since 1999. Wow. That's amazing, man. And you've got children? Yes. Yeah, I've got six. Uh, daughters? Uh, four. And so, you know, this is, a, this is a little complex for a lot of men, of course, you know, living in a world that's guidance-centric, but then living, living with women, particularly those who are married and have have daughters, uh, particularly with daughters, how do, you, how do you teach men how to be great men without undermining your daughters? Well, I don't necessarily see it as undermining my daughters. It's just what it is. The bottom line is this. I treat my sons different than my daughters. But with my daughters, I make sure they see dad around mom. I let them see how mom and dad interact. One thing that they always say about us is that all the kids in school are blown away at the fact that, wow, your mom and dad still go out two or three times at dinner every day when my mom and dad, they don't even like each other and things like that. I can't believe your parents are like that, you know? So what I, what I do for my daughters is I show them that, you know what, you know, dad loves you. You know, if there's only one man that loves you in this world, it's going to be dad, number one. But number two is dad cuts for mom and cares about mom as well. And you've got to learn this is how dad and moms interact to my, with my girls. My, and also my sons, too, but with my daughters especially because we're in a time right now where they, they feel like they're insecure, they get knocked down. But I tell my, I, like my dad told me, everything you do, you, that's how Williams does it. You get that little, even if you feed your guinea pig, that's how Williams does it. Always remember your name and who you are and what you stand for. And always remember that dad loves you. That is always going to be there, but also mom. And mom and dad interact and they love watching the interaction. They just, they just, they, they think, 
they think it's weird that people are not doing the stuff that we're doing. They're like, what do you mean? Don't your parents go out all the time? And don't your parents uh, throw water and run around the house and pillow fight and all the other stuff? Your parents don't do that? That's weird. So they, they, what we do is normal. And when people don't do what we do, they see it as weird, man. That's so funny because my children, the same thing. I've got three daughters. And what I love more than anything is hearing them say, mom and dad, you guys have relationship goals. That's, that's what they say. But a lot of the things that I've been sharing and learning and teaching through my videos, uh, I have women and, and a lot of men comment and say it's misogynist. But it, it tends to be, uh, even if they call it misogynist, it tends to be that this is the mindset, these are the rules, this is the way of being that actually preserves and, and grows healthy relationships. It's success, brother. Okay. You see, the thing is for a lot of people, they want success, but they don't want to listen to how to obtain it. You are success. You are the, you are a successful man, successful husband, successful father. And yet all you're trying to tell them is eggs, milk, and sugar, but they just don't want to follow the playbook because they don't believe in themselves. And again, I always tell guys, look, I'm only putting the weapons on the table. I'm not putting a gun to your head. If you want success, just follow the playbook of success. And But it starts with you. See, everything starts with you as a man. It's not you and her. It, it has to be you. You've got to be the roots. You've got to be that rock and that foundation for any of this to work. Because if you're not that strong man and she smells a little bit of sugar in the water or taste it, she will never respect you. And that is the problem. If you don't have a woman, see, I, I, look, I, I, I love to have my woman's love, but I need her respect. That's mm -hmm. the difference. I, I need, listen, respect me as a man, we're good. And that means with her respect, she knows her place. At, and I know it's going to sound misogynistic, but she knows her place at the table. She knows her role. She knows what to do. I don't have to run behind her and tell her what to do. Why? Because from the moment we met, Elliot, I have cultivated what I expect, and she has not only knocked it out the box, but she has knocked it way out the box. And what she was when I first met her is the same woman she is 20 years later, sir. Uh, how old are your daughters? Oh, my gosh. Uh, let me do my head in my head. Uh, 20, 26, 24, 18 and 17. So they're dating age. Yes. Uh, I'm curious, do you speak with the men that they choose to date? And what kind of conversations do you have with them before they start going out with your daughters? Well, I always, I always do kind of like the Martin Lawrence, Will Smith thing. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing in my house? Who the hell, what you want with my, what, man, you better put down, put down my food. Now I just, and again, I'm real playful with them, but you yeah. know, um, I sit and talk to them and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm not the guy with the shotgun. I just let them know, look, um, you know, this, you got precious cargo. You know what I mean? This is my daughter. This is, this is my daughter. And she's real. She means a lot to me. Listen, I know y'all going to y'all gonna probably have disagreements and all that other stuff. Just don't put your hands on her. You know what I mean? If you feel like you're getting mad or too angry, just walk away. But just enjoy the experience that y'all have and keep it moving. But I also tell my daughter, see, I don't really have to tell my daughters that much because they already know because they learn from their mother. So they're real respectful. And they, I mean, my daughters go way and be, I mean, I, I mean, my girls, man, they just, they do too much. They, they're just, they're so much like their mother. They go overboard and with their kindness and stuff because that's how they were raised. So, it's like, you know, I got to deal with that. But it's a balance. But it works out well. Do, uh, do any of the young men uh, watch your videos? My sons, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I, the foot massage, you laughing at me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I loved it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, my thing is this. See, the thing about boys is that they, they never have been taught manhood really from men. You know, um, you know. I made sure that when they were about seven years old, I cut the umbilical cord, meaning that love your mother, you know, respect your mother, but you are not to relate to your mother. She is not you and you are not her. So she is going to teach you how to say yes, no, please, and thank you. But other than that, 
you are no longer to relate to mom. I didn't say not love mom, just no longer relate to mom. So at that point, you know, like in Star Wars, we cut the little Padawan thing off, and then they've been on my wing ever since because I'm, I'm finding them and redefining them and showing them this is what a Williams is, and this is what I expect you to be. Hmm. And so one of the things that I know you speak about and many of the men in the manosphere speak about is, is having yourself as your mental point of origin. Yes. Uh, tell me a little bit more about that. Well, everything is about you, you as a man. And, 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 and far as a mental point of origin, what I always try to tell these guys is that I need you to be the man to see the big picture. Your mental point of origin should show you that you are a man of vision. Mm. So when that sets direction, you're someone when you speak to men or you speak to women, you are transparent. What you see is what you get. And everything you say that you got to be clear and concise and everything you say, make sure it's impactful enough to move mountains in their mind. I teach them that you have to uh, own things, be accountable and also responsible of your actions. And also understand this, you're not going to win every time, but God damn it, you're a Williams and that's all that matters. So there's so many things to building that foundation that every young boy needs. And, uh, and I give my sons as far as that mental point of origin. But see, a lot of guys do the worst thing, Elliot, is they lie to themselves. A lot of guys lie to themselves every morning they look in the mirror and pretend that they are their mental point of origin until they get around a beautiful woman and then they're ripping off their spine and their balls and submitting themselves to them. Hmm. So I, I tend to, I don't know if I, I picked this up from studying some of you guys work or just something I kind of understood, but uh, women tend to do this naturally. You know, they put themselves, uh, I think Rolo says gynocentric, but you know, it's, it's always about putting themselves first. And I think it's, it's normal and natural given that they, they need safety and security in order to, to bear and to raise children. But in terms of leadership in the relationship, uh, do women naturally want to relinquish leadership and be led by men? Or uh, is this something that we have to, take into our own hands and establish? Well, in today's world, we have to take it in our own hands because women see what I call the 98. There's what I call the 98% and you got us one percenters. So they're not used to real men. They're used to guys that apologize, that have no confidence, that stay in their comfort zone, that whine, bitch, moan, complain, and a bunch of victims. They got a lot of feminine behaviors in them. So what happens is when a woman runs into these guys, of course she's running a relationship. She's telling them how to think. She's like the mother. She mothers them, you know, telling them where he can go, where he can't go, and what he can do, and what he can't do. And he will always compromise because he doesn't know any better because most guys, because I always tell them, just because you live with both parents doesn't mean dad was a man. Dad could have told you, you know, hey, son, happy wife, happy life. Don't make mom angry and all this other bullshit. So these guys go along with that and rip off their spine and submit and, and just try to get women to like them. Well, the thing is, when they meet a real man, they have to compromise. They have no choice but to compromise and bow down or take the knee in Lord of the Rings. I mean, the Game of Thrones, excuse me. They got to take the knee because here's the thing. A man is not going to allow anybody to go uh, be above him and, and just in a relationship wise. And that's the thing. Uh, you've got to be that man, that king, but not just play king. But a woman will conform to a real man. It's just that they don't see them that many times. You know, men like you, Elliot, um, you know, not, not trying to blow up your ego, but men like you are next to the elves, unicorns, Smurfs, and Bigfoot. I mean, you're, you're rare. So when a woman sees a real man, she has no choice but to submit. Or there's not going to be a relationship, whereas the normal guy is already submitting when he first meets her, bends over backwards, buys her a bunch of drinks, buys her dinner, drives her around, pays her rent, be a shoulder to cry, all those cupcake things that, 
women don't find attractive, brother. I tend to think that a lot of times men do this unconsciously. They rip out their spine, like you say, because of his addiction to sex and, the, and their needing of the sex and the, the sensuality and the emotion and the feelings that are associated with it that in a lot of ways they get from the drug dealer. You know, it's that, it's that high and the woman ends up being the drug dealer. What are your thoughts on promiscuity and premarital sex and uh, just, you know, having a lot of sex with a lot of women? Well, here's my thing. I, one thing I won't, I can't do is judge a man for how many women he sleeps with if, he, if that's his choice. Mm -hmm. All I just try to tell them is please protect yourself. Wrap up and don't have un, un children out of wedlock. Um, it's, it's, it's hard because these guys, that's all they think about is mm -hmm. sex. But what they don't understand, there's a difference between wanting sex and being sexy where you don't have to see, I, you know what Ellie was weird is I tell guys when I, when I used to go out there and meet women, I'm never trying to have sex with them. And they're like, what do you mean you're not trying to have sex with them? I say, no, I'm not trying. Look, because I'm already having sex mentally with her when we talking and I don't, <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm not the kind of guy. Look, see guys don't understand there are women out there that want to sleep with you. I, you know, I want her to want me by who I am. And I always tell guys, and I always say John, James Bond. James Bond comes in, and my name is Bond, James Bond. You know, he does his thing, but he never caters. He never panders. He never begs, or he's never thirsty. But yet women want to sleep with him. Why? Because of the attributes that he has, the way he thinks, the way he moves. And he doesn't make it about sex. He makes it more about him where, you know what, it's about me. You're going to have to get on my boat. You're going to have to ride my car. You're going to do the things I want you to do because, again, James Bond, like real men, have options, and that's very attractive to women. A lot of these young men don't have those options. A lot of these guys just go from one relationship to the next. Women don't find that sexy. They don't find that attractive. They love competition, and they love guys that get women. But when it comes to having sex, man, I'm not here to tell anybody what they should and shouldn't do. You know what I mean? I'm just saying protect your sperm. That's all that matters to me, man. One of the coolest things you spoke about at your talk at the 21 convention was making your own laws, creating your own rules. And you spoke, you spoke about the three laws of every man. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, the three laws of every man is this simple. And this is what, again, um, which makes uh, men great. Um, as long as you follow three laws, and the first law I always say the law of the land. Don't kill nobody because if you kill someone, yes, you're going to jail. Mm -hmm. Next one is the law of the street. If if the speed limit is 20 and you're driving 70 and you get caught, you're gonna get pulled over, or something might more happen to you depending on your race. Um, the third law is the law of your job, meaning that go to work and do the do the job that you're supposed to do. That's it. But outside of those three laws, as a man, what they don't understand is you can create whatever law you want to create outside that benefits you. But with a, now, again, this is the kind of stuff that make this separates the men from everybody else, because I don't follow anybody else's laws outside of that. You can't tell me what else to do outside those three laws. I create what I want to do. I live in my world, and that's just that's the freedom that we have as men. And it's the same laws that have made my parents, my siblings, and everybody I know has to follow by my laws. And if you don't follow by my laws, then I'm not even associated with I'm I'm moving on because I'm not dealing with crabs in the bucket. I'm not dealing with backstabbing and all that drama that a lot of guys deal with and all that, you know, the the mom coming in trying to tell you what to do or the, you know, all that, all that drama. I, I live a drama free life, man. And it's the greatest thing in the world. You just follow those three laws, Elliot, and then you create what you want to do, but you got to be able to stand by that stuff, Elliot. You just can't make something up and not stand by it. You got to stand by it and be willing to die for it, man. You mentioned one of your rules or laws is uh, drama free. I'm drama free. I think that's a wonderful one. Uh, it's funny because I get a lot of messages from young men and uh, they, they're dealing with all kinds of drama from women. 
And uh, the very first thing I, I shake my head at is then why are you dealing with her? Why don't, why hasn't there been a rule or a boundary or a law that, that uh, precludes this drama? I think actually some guys actually enjoy the drama. It seems. Well, you know, it's amazing. I have guys uh, call, write me, you know, clients and say, well, you know what? My woman, you know, I, I, you know, she's always yelling at me. She, I said, no, 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 no. I, I stop right there, Elliot. <laughs> I say, wait a second. You say that statement right. And the statement, the right statement is, I allow my woman to treat me that way. I don't, we, we're not, emo we're not women here. We're not going to be the victim here. You're going to own that shit. So say that shit right. Well, I let my woman, okay, now we can talk. Because now you're going to accept and own that because you are the reason why she is treating you that way because she doesn't believe in you as a man. And you can't blame her. You got to look in the man. This is the thing, Elliot. They, they want to blame the clouds and the cars and they want to blame the trees. And they want to blame everything in the world, big dog, instead of looking in the mirror and saying, I'm the reason she's mistreating me. Because when she did it the first time, like, oh, Elliot, think about this. I always tell guys, every boy should have a dog. Everybody should have a dog. Why? Because you need to know what loyalty is. That dog will show you what loyalty is, period. If your woman is not as loyal as that dog, hey, fall back, booty call, or get rid of her. But when, you, when you're coming to me telling me, well, my girl's doing this and my girl's doing that, She's supposed to do that if you're weak. I don't, I don't mm -hmm. wish to think bad on you, but let's be 100 on this shit. If she punking your ass, she's supposed to punk your ass because you deserve that shit because you ain't standing on shit. And if you ain't standing on it, she's supposed to do it. But that's their wake-up call. And they get mad and upset, but it's uncomfortable. But you got, like I tell them, you got to draw a line in the sand, Elliot. You got to burn the ships. You got you to gotta make a point where you can't say, this is it. No more are you going to talk to me that way. No more are you going to disrespect me. But a lot of guys don't understand manhood, Elliot, so they don't get the language, brother. What are some of your other laws? Well, some of my laws is this. Basically, I treat people the way I want to be treated. That's, that's, and, it, and it's really simple, man. It's, it's just how I go about my day. I, 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 again, I don't do the, like when it comes to relate laws with the relationship, I, I don't buy drinks and dinners and stuff like that uh, for sex. Yeah. Um, well, I always tell guys this, if I buy a woman a drink, it's because I want some company. If I buy her dinner, it's because I want a nice piece of candy on my shoulder and I want to uh, have a nice conversation with someone. I'm never doing it for sex. If anything you do for sex is not really good, a good thing to do as a man. So, again, I don't buy the drinks. I stand on me, but also my laws of approaching women. I mean, this is the worst thing that we have nowadays. These guys out here being taught to lie, manipulate, use pickup lines, tricks, and gimmicks. Instead of just walking over and talking to the woman and being transparent. And seeing that, you know what, is she interested or not? But they want to lie to themselves. They want to play the game with someone, Elliot, who is the master of the game. These women, mm -hmm. these guys don't realize. Think about this, Elliot. She wears makeup, push-up bras, and tight clothes because she is trying to hide things. And she's trying to be deceptive. Mm -hmm. So you're telling me if you come at a woman that knows the game of deceit, she ain't going to realize and recognize? But these guys don't see that because these guys want the quick fix. They want to be a doctor in a day. They want to take the magical pill and think they can get women. And then they end up calling you because she's got their foot on their neck and mistreating them. And then they want to know what they did wrong, big dog. Hmm. One of the things that you, you say, it's interesting that you just brought it up, you know, say no to dinner dates, but also stay away from internet dating. And why is that? Well, for a lot, the reason I say stay away, from, uh, stay away from internet dating for a lot of guys is because you don't, well, not you, but they don't have enough knowledge of themselves 
to maintain any kind of relationship, more or less an internet one. Mm -hmm. uh, they got to be careful out here as far as internet dating goes because they don't understand why they think, why they on the front end think they running a the game, they getting played by a lot of these women out here. These women are out here to get paid. That's it. They don't really want relationships with weak guys. They don't really want you touching them and kissing you and all that stuff. But what they would do is they would do this, Elliot, and this is some of the game. They would go on Facebook and they would put a picture of themselves in something scandally clad. And how many times, what do you see underneath? Beautiful, sexy, gorgeous, beautiful, sexy, gorgeous. And the thing about most people on Facebook is they hide their work job and their information and only their friends can have access to that. So what these guys do is in return, they'll send, you know, penis pictures and friend requests where these women will then accept the friend request, see what kind of money they are making, and then they figure out what they're going to use them for. Is this going to be the guy to drive me around? Is this going to be the guy? I know a woman that has a guy who drew from Miami to, to Georgia just to take her washer and dryer that another man paid for up to her, to her apartment. That's the game. <laughs> These, see, the thing is, these guys are prepared for that game. These women know the game. And I hate using the word the game, but they know how to play real well, brother. So you've been married for, uh, man, how, how many years has it been? It's 99, so 20, 20 years. <laughs> what, do you, what do you say it takes to have a happy marriage? Well, the first thing is to have a happy marriage is you got to know what you want as a man, number one, okay? Once you can figure that out, then you got to remember. you See, marriage is, I don't see it as a job. I see it as, as, a, as it's fun, it's exciting. It's, it's, I mean, my woman has only been upset with me five times in 20 years, and it's my fault. I take her, you know, she, see, I'm a workaholic, so she only asks me, when I'm sleepy, come to bed. Five times I slept in my office. It's on me. But we don't fight. We don't argue. We don't have problems. Um, what it takes is, is an understanding of yourself, understanding of what your expectations are, and being able to allow, allow to tell somebody that without worrying about losing that person. Either they're going to work with you, excuse me, or they're going to work against you. It's, uh, it's when you're married is not – I know how to marriage proof my things. I used to be a whore. So I know how to marriage proof my marriage. So I know everything that I did in the beginning to get her. I still continue to do it this day. And then some on top of that, um, I'm the kind of guy that, you know, we still go out like at least two or three times a week. I take her out on dates and I, you know, we go out, we spend time together, you know, uh, we'll watch the food network. That's our, or do you love, we either watch, Property Brothers or, or Chopped or, you know, some Food Network show. That's our thing. But that's our thing. And uh, but it's really talking and communicating. And one thing guys don't do, Elliot, is they don't listen. They don't listen to their women when they're trying to talk. You know what? They're going to have bad days, man. That's just how it is. But you got to be able to recognize when she's having a bad day. And you got to recognize what you can do to make her day better. Sometimes you don't need to fix it. Sometimes if she, I know she's having a bad day. I know her favorite popcorn's around the corner. I know on Saturday she loves this apricot baked bread that I'll sneak away and go get. You know, Super Bowl Sunday, I do that sometimes. Or Saturday, just I'll drive into town, 20 miles into town to get her favorite bread. And it's not because I'm trying to kiss her ass. I'm just showing her that I know you and I know it makes you feel better. And sometimes we don't have to talk. I just do small little gestures like that, man. It's just, you've got to know you and her, man, at the end of the day. That's amazing. Yeah, I think a lot of men, when they get into the relationship, they forget that they're still dating. And in a, in a lot of ways, you still, you still got to impress her <laughs> and leave an impression. I mean, I've been married uh, 15 years, and I agree with everything that you're saying. It's actually a lot of fun for me that way also. Uh, you talk a lot about sex and seduction. Yes. And I think that's super important uh, when you're getting to know a woman and then all the way through marriage and the relationship. One of the things you have written here is you talk about creating a roller coaster ride of emotions yes. inside a woman's head when she first meets you so that you can forever establish yourself, leave an imprint in her memory, uh, which makes you much more than just a friend. T tell me a little bit about that roller coaster. 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because what I teach my guys is that you got to be all things. You got to be the dirty, nasty, kinky, naughty guy. But you also got to shift down to be the romantic, sensual, seductive, and sweet guy. They're, they're, they're different. See, a lot of guys don't understand that they're different phases to being a great lover. And, and they don't understand is that they're women. They're different women. I always say women are like music. You know, you've got to find the right frequency. But the thing is, is that what I learned from my mentor back in the day was Ross Jeffries. And he was the white dude with the afro. And he always painted the pretty little clouds and all that other stuff. I used to watch him on PBS. What I learned from my mentor is whenever you talk to a woman, you have a canvas. And either you're going to draw stick figures or you're going to paint a picture of what it will be like to be with you. And that's what I'm trying to tell guys. I, I was taught to write poetry and learn and have a mouthpiece to be able to be smooth with it. And, and when I'm talking to her, you know, it's not just your baby come over and let's have sex. No, it's like, why don't you put some sexy on? You know what? I got a good idea. I'll make some, I'll make you this and you know, we'll have some nice quiet music. You can drink wine. I don't drink. So, you know, you'll have wine and I'll have my little cupcake, uh, orange juice and, pineapple drink my little <laughs> drink when I'm feeling frisky I add Sprite so that's my little drink but um but it's painting a picture that's in her mind of why she should be with you most guys are so busy going see they're going after the, I always say women have three pussies and I always talk about two and they're always going after the one between her legs the one that has access to everything is the one between her ears because you can put that emotional imprint on her when you know sex. Sex is not just Miss Crabtree's fifth grade class of birds and bees. It's more sensual. It's more romantic. It's, um, it, it's like you say, you know what? I, I use Easter as an example. Most people on Easter, okay? Most people on Easter will do the Easter eggs with the kids if they have them. Or they'll go to church on Easter and they'll have an Easter meal and that's it. Well, I like to take it to another level. I'll get an Easter basket. Matter of fact, I got the Easter basket right there. I show my guys. I'll get an Easter basket. I'll go to Walmart. I'll get those little hollow eggs. And what I will do is I'll type up sexual things that I want to do to you and what you want to do to me. <laughs> I'll put one in every egg. I'll put the eggs all over the house. And when she comes over, I'll give her the basket and let her go Easter egg hunting and let her find the eggs, and whatever she opens up will do. That's just one thing. Uh, another thing, Valentine's Day. You want to take that to another level, and this is how you make the roller coaster ride. Every more, every, what do people get on Valentine's Day? They, they get their flowers and their roses and their chocolates in the daytime, right? No, 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 no. I don't want to do what they do because I'm not him. So what I would do is I'll wait till we go out to dinner when everything is packed, and I would go at lunchtime, and I meet the, the maitre d', and I give them all the stuff. So when I order dinner, first thing after desserts, because when I order dessert, bring an item out every five seconds, every five minutes. So first thing they do is they bring you know, the balloons and everybody's like, oh my God, the women, it's just, a, it's just a reaction. Oh my God, this is the most romantic thing. And the guy's like, damn, why not think about that? And then all, she's got all the attention. Then you bring out the flower, not the flowers, you bring out the chocolates and then the bear. And then at the end, you bring the roses. And those are the things that change up the game to women because they women are used to guys uh, being that creative because real quick, because as we lo we've lost what it means to be a child in, in our hearts, man, because as a child, I was adventurous, creative, and I had an imagination and I still carry that over today. I'm, I'm an old dude, but I'm still a big ass kid. I, <laughs> I love to have fun, man. And I have an imagination and I love to take, sex and passion and romance to another level where if she even thinks about leaving me, she's going to think twice because she knows that I have options. So I just want to get clear on something. What would, what's the difference between seduction, like you're talking about it right now, and the needy, uh, weak behavior that, that a lot of men uh, engage in. So what's the difference between sedu seducing your woman the way you're talking about and, uh, and, and doing, it, doing it the way many men do it, which is from a weak place? Okay. See, the thing about most men, everything they're trying to do is they're trying to smash. 
That's all they're doing. They're just thinking. They're not thinking with their, their right head. They're thinking with the wrong head. So all they want to do is hop on her and smash, and they want, to, they want to do it quick. And sometimes it works. I'm not saying it doesn't. But then they scratch their head. They're like, wait a second. Where's she at? She don't want to have nothing to do with me. What happened, Steve? And I always tell them the difference between is this. You know when you go to the mall and you go to the food court, there are people outside the, the food stores, they have what? Samples. And they will give you a sample of what's there. And if you like it enough, not only will you stand in line to buy it that time, every time you go to the mall, you're going to be thinking about getting it again. <laughs> My thing is this. I want to give you samples of sex and I want to give you samples of what it will be like to be with me. See, I don't see when I first meet you, sex is already starting. You see, it starts from the moment you approach her where a lot of guys go wrong. When you're using the tricks, the gimmicks and you're nervous and you're stuttering and you don't know what to do. They already know, uh, Elliot, they, they I always say they go to the past the future and the present, just like that, with every guy they meet, because they've met us all before. They just know that when you are stuttering and all this other stuff, you don't, they, they like this. The way you are outside the bedroom is the same way they perceive you in the bedroom. And if you can't have enough confidence to walk up to a woman and just say, you know what, excuse me, I don't mean to be rude. I know you're busy, um, but I thought, and the reason I came over here is because it was something about your smile or your eyes or something about <laughs> my shoulders that drove me over here. Now, oh, let me introduce myself. How you doing? My name is Steve. Shake her hand and say, like I said before, I know you're busy and I don't want to take too much of your time. But you know what? I'd love to take you out sometime for maybe coffee, tea, or ice cream. That's or feeding the ducks. That's all. No dinner. That's it. Just those. Those it right there. And you know what? Here's my card. Call me. See, a lot of guys are always pandering to get a woman's number. Mm -hmm. And a guy that has options and is arrogant, <laughs> you can call me because it's about me. Because if you cash in that Willy Wonka gold ticket, I promise you it's going to be an adventure that you will never forget. And number two, why I do that, Elliot, is because of this. Is because just like back in the day, women used to have handkerchiefs. They used to drop the handkerchief. And <laughs> Did in a guy, and that was a signal. So I just don't want to waste guys' time. But the thing is about me is I don't make it about something I know I can get like that because I know who I am. So I don't have to rush it. I don't have to be third because again, here's the here's the biggest point, Ellie. Get your crayon out on this one. It, whatever you worship, you're gonna be weak to. Yeah. So if these guys worship women, the problem is. They worship them so much, they lose a sight of who they are. And I don't worship women. I worship myself. And just like you, you worship, you worship, your, you worship the Lord. You worship your family. You, you have worships, you know what I mean? But for a lot of these guys, they are scared of women, Elliot. They don't know how to talk to women. They don't have experience because it's not just the fear of failure, Elliot. It's the fear of success. What happens if I get the woman? I don't know what to do. So I'm not going to do anything at all. So it's just so many combinations of things. But at the end of the day, man, it's learning, it's knowing you. It go, see, it always comes back to you and your mindset. It always comes back home to you and what you know. Because there, because she meets a million guys out there. And I always say this, Elliot, I can meet a million, you, I can meet a million women like you, but you'll never find a motherfucker like me. <laughs> That's my attitude, man. So you did that little... Uh demonstration of what you would say when you meet a woman you sound almost like a recruiter <laughs> rather than someone who's uh you know trying to get trying to get a woman well it's not really a recruiter i'm just about what is uh, the reason i say excuse me is because it's courteous i always i don't i'm being courteous uh the next thing is is i'm recognizing that either she's sitting down or she's moving i'm recognizing that so i don't mean to hold it because she look i'm interrupting her day She's doing something. I'm interrupting her day. So that's why I tell her, you, I, I see that you're busy, whatever you're doing. I don't mean to take too much of your time. But then the next point is I got to introduce myself. Most guys don't even do that. And introducing myself, I want to shake her hand because sex is, we're, we're playing the game right now. I want to touch her. I want to make contact with her. But then after I shake her hand, reinforce what I said before, once I get her name, showing her I listen. You know, uh, because I'm, I'm going to break this down in a second, but 
I'm not only am I doing that, then I'm doing the thing that most guys don't do. I'm telling her why I came over there. Most guys don't do that. This is why I came over there because I, there was something about you that caught my eye. And that's the truth. I'm just being transparent, clear and concise. And this is what my intentions are, period. I want to take you out. And that's it. And it is, but, but in that, I always, the underlining is, I always tell guys, you got to make them smile, blush, laugh, think, and react. If you can't do that, you're out the game. If you can't do that early on, you're out. Or the best thing is, if she doesn't say or recognize either a player or, uh, like, you know, you're a ladies' man, then you got work to do. you either going to be bartering for relationships or you're going to trigger to want to have one with you. So my thing is this. I just want to be transparent, clear and concise, and impactful by what I do where most guys are, well, how was your day and what's going on with your life and where do you live and all that boring ass shit. I don't want to do that. I, I just don't, man. I really like that. And it kind of goes against a lot of what I've heard men in the pickup uh, industry talk about where they're using all kinds of tricks and funny little lines and little tactics. It sounds like you just being straight up, you just, a Walk man. up to her and just make your intentions known. Being a motherfucking man. That's what men, that's what men, men don't deceive. Men don't come up with pickup lines. I stand on who I am. You know what? I'm coming down from Mount Olympus to hang out with you in my mind. <laughs> I am gracing you with me. So you know what? I don't want to waste your time and I don't want to waste mine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my bid in honestly and realize I'm not going to get every woman. But don't think by, and this is the problem with those pickup guys, they have no game. That's why they're using tactics. Men don't use tactics. Men just be men. This is who I am. Accept me for who I am. If not, I'm cool. But they, this is the problem that we're having, Elliot. There are a lot of guys out there teaching these young men to wear a mask, pretend, lie, manipulate, deceive. No, that's not the game, man. It's being honest. It's not the game. It's the truth. You can't cheat the truth. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to cheat the truth, man. My thing is this. What you see is what you get. And if you're not down, I'm cool with it. And if you are, look at this. I, I'm, more hard, I'm harder on myself when I do get the woman, Elliot, than when I don't. Why? Because the competitive guy inside of me says, damn, Steve, it took you 10 minutes to pull her. Why couldn't you do it in seven? Why couldn't you do it in six? You got to do better. I'm just that competitive on myself. But if she says no, it's not my loss because <laughs> I'm just that guy, man. <laughs> well, I think a lot of what you teach is super valuable for young men to, to hear and to know about and to use in their, uh, in their relationships and in their dating life. What is your mission? Why do you do what you do? Well, the mission is, is because a lot, of, a lot of guys, okay, see, the thing was, when I was young, Elliot, there was always that guy that was getting the women, you know, there was always a guy that was pulling the women, and he had the personality, and I started at nine, I, I wanted to, you know, <laughs> wanted to learn from this guy, you know, I was getting girls, and I was talking mess, and I would go over a girl's house, and she would unbutton my shirt, and I'd get scared, you know, I, I kiss girls, in the bushes and get in trouble, get my butt whipped and all that other stuff. But uh, when I met my mentor, you know, we were bugging him about teaching us. And the first thing he did, the first lesson that he did was he, he took us uh, around the corner and he asked us, how many you want money? And as little kids were raising their hand, we want money. And he pulled out some pennies, uh, dimes and uh, nickels and threw that on the ground. And he waited. And for all, everyone who got down there to, to scrap for that money, he said, get over there and everyone else to get out of his face. And, and the reason why is this. See, if you think it and your behaviors are not aligned up with what you think, then you're, you're lying to yourself and you just, you're living in a fantasy world. Get out of my face. You said you wanted money. And that penny is a penny more than you have, a nickel more than you have, and a dime more than you have. See, the kids that didn't go down for the money, they thought they wanted the 20s, the 10s, and the 5s because they thought that was money. But that penny and dime and a nickel was money. So that was the first test. The first test is, and, and, and that's because I'm trying to show guys a mindset trumps all. And, but you, what I'm trying to get them to do is see that 
you can thank it. But if your behavior, like I say, if your behaviors aren't lined up, then you're going to have problems like most guys have today because they live in this fantasy world. They think these things, but they're never working towards being that one current or what I call flow. So that's part of, of why I do what I do because I, I, I want to help guys that want the help. I'm not, I'm not forcing myself on anyone or holding a gun in anyone's head. If you want help, I'm going to do it, but please understand, this ain't chicken soup for the soul. We're not going to give you Neosporin when you fall off your bike. I'm going to punch you in your goddamn chest because when you go outside that door, uh, Elliot, and this is what happens to a lot of young boys, the world does not care about you like you think. And everybody's out for themselves. And it is a jungle out there. And if you are not prepared as a man, you are going to get ate up in that. So what I'm just trying to do is just trying to change the world one man at a time as lo- while I myself am still trying to grow as a man because I'm not even done. I'm not done until I'm dead. So I'm still trying to be a man at the same time, brother. Yeah, and I think this is really important work to do. Uh, if the world is going to advance and we're going to get to be the strongest version of humanity, it starts with men. It all does. Yes. And so uh, you're a coach. You've got some products. What are some of the ways that, uh, that people can learn more about your philosophy and get, get support from you in their journey? What I always tell, I, they can go to the manmindset.com. And what I always love to do, because everybody's like, you know, oh, I hear all these guys, these coaches, and I don't know. Listen, I got receipts. All you got to do is when you go to my website, the first thing you'll see is the receipts that happen from some of my clients. But what I like to do is I would tell guys, if you need to talk, send me an email at themanmindset at gmail.com. Send me a number if you're serious. And what I do, Elliot, is I call everybody because everybody doesn't start at the same point. So I make it my business to call you, number one, but also number two, Elliot, when you do buy a product, I'm not just going to b- let you buy something and you just go away. I'm going to be there with you along the way. So if you have a problem, I'll you say, hey, Steve, I got this problem. Call me. So uh, I'm just saying that I'm here to change you. But you've got to understand that what I teach is something that's going to go against your thinking and how you feel. And it's not going to, it's not going to be a comfortable feeling, Elliot. But you know, being a man sometimes, that's just how things are. So I would just say first, go to the manmindset.com, kick the tires. Elliot, we've got cooking shows. I got shows to show how to cook. Uh, I've got a dating chat line with women on there already. Uh, I we do things like I say, Halloween. I show them how to pick up women on Halloween, Valentine's Day. We do things that most guys don't do. Why? Because we're the real deal, big guy. Man, that's incredible. And I, I really appreciate you. I appreciate your talk at the 21. Uh, you'll be at the one in October too, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm going, matter of fact, I'm going to Poland and I'm going to the one in October. Absolutely. Oh, man, those guys are in for a great surprise. And so you've got a YouTube channel, uh, your website. Uh, I just started following you on Instagram. So those of you guys who are interested in what Steve's talking about here, I, I encourage you to go check out his stuff. And, uh, and Steve, keep doing what you're doing, man. I can't wait to link up with you again in October. Man, let me tell you something. I, I, and I don't mean to ego blow up, but I, I'm, I'm very honored to uh, have this opportunity, man. You are you are what I call the antithesis of what men should be. And the work that you're doing, man, is really incredible. And I tip my hat off to you because not too many men can take what you're giving them, but you're only doing what men do. And I, and again, I, I got love for you, man. And I, and I appreciate you, brother. Yeah, man. I think it's our responsibility, especially men who have been successful in relationships to, uh, to dispel a lot of the myths, undo the conditioning and show men, yeah, maybe man. things that they maybe things that their father couldn't teach them. Well, I got and that's why I got like you. I got, I got a live radio show. We do live shows. You it, let me tell you how cold we are, real quick, Elliot. You call me and you got a text message from a woman, and you don't know what to do. Just let me do it. I do it because <laughs> I'm the real deal. I help you with text messages with women, dating, finances, everything. We see a man is all things, and that's what we're just trying to get guys to be all things, man. At the end of the day. Absolutely. Well, Steve, thanks again, buddy. And uh, you have a great day. 
Thank you, sir. And you have one too, brother. Thank you. You got it.